What is love? Is it about finding the one? Some people believe that there is one person out there who is absolutely perfect for them and that they'll have a special perfect relationship that will last forever. This one also meets all of their needs so they won't need anyone else. People also believe that we all have to find the one in order to be truly happy or complete. Loads of people believe in this and I guess it's kind of romantic but I don't think it's true and it's probably not a good idea to believe in it. Believing in the one could make relationships harder. So believing in the one means people might not do the work that is required to make a relationship better. If we are in an unhappy relationship then we may hold on to the one because we are so afraid that this is our only opportunity for a relationship. Believing in the one means that we also expect this person to provide us with everything that we need to be happy. This puts so much pressure on the relationship and each other that it can make it really difficult. Believing in the one makes being single harder as well. Seeing everyone walking around with their wands can be pretty depressing if we've been told that there is one out there for us but we haven't found them yet. This is particularly hard if we find it difficult to spend any time with or near people that we may fancy or may fancy us. Also being single and believing in the one means that we think we can never possibly be as happy as someone who has found their one. Good news though, you don't have to believe in the one. There isn't just one one but hundreds, thousands or millions of ones all over the place. Very few people go through their lives with just one partner and very few of these people who do are happy all of the time. Things have changed, or at least we're more honest about our relationships now. Some people have more one relationship at a time too, either honestly and openly or without their partner knowing, or people have shag buddies or non-exclusive dates, or have close non-romantic relationships with their mates or spend some quality time with their family. Whatever you think about this, believing that there is more than one one can help take the pressure off us a bit. It can make us feel better about being single, it can help us to be more realistic about what a romantic partner can give us, and it can make us focus more on what we can give ourselves and how we can do that. Rom-coms are popular. However, when it comes to learning from them about love and relationships, it's a bit like learning about how to have sex from porn. Just like porn, they follow a very familiar structure almost every time. Boy meets girl, let's face it, they nearly get together in the first half hour, something happens so they don't get together, they don't talk about it, one person gets in a huff because the other isn't talking to them, something else happens, it's getting towards the end of the film, there's some running, one person says they love the other person, they say they love them back, they kiss, and they all live happily ever after. Rom-coms can be fun to watch, but if we compare our own experience of love to how they show it in the movies, it can be a bit depressing. They can also give us bad advice about how to make relationships actually happen. Just saying, oh, I love you, and someone saying, I love you back, isn't love in itself. Love is a process, and it's often quite small and everyday, as it involves chatting about stuff, making each other tea, sending hugs, and generally being kind and communicative. It also involves ups and downs both for individuals and for the relationship as a whole. Okay, that might be a terrible film, but it is more realistic. Looking to rom-coms is very comforting because they make things look really easy. However, when we watch them, we can be hard on ourselves and the people around us for not matching up to this. See also pop songs, which make love sound really, really easy or incredibly difficult, depending on which one you're listening to. Some people believe that love is like an energy, like a bolt of lightning, which actually implies that love is pretty random and that you have no control over whether you're in love or not. It also implies that you don't have any control over who you love. Well, people see love as an energy force type thing. It's kind of on or off and we don't get any say over whether we're in love or not anymore. All very romantic, but not actually true. This love as an energy thing is also not great for single people wanting relationships. Because love is this random energy, people think that they just have to wait for it to happen to them. Actually, love is something that we make happen for us, as much as it's something that happens to us. Love can be a pretty magical feeling when it happens, but it's not random, and it's not just down to luck. You have more control than you think. Ever had a moment of connection with someone? Maybe you looked into each other's eyes? felt your heartbeat race, they smiled, you smiled, your body tingled, you felt like you weren't blinking. Lots of complex things happen in your body when this happens. Oxytocin is a chemical in your brain that can help you to tune in with another person. It goes off when this kind of connection happens, helping you to listen really intently to the other person, 
to mirror what they're doing and to establish greater eye contact. The neurons in your brain apparently actually mirror the other person's. Your brain sends signals to your heart along the vagus nerve. The heartbeat is regulated by this, which helps you to control your emotional responses. The heart then may also receive signals from the genitals to pump some blood down there in order to get a boner. It's all pretty complex and can happen pretty quickly. Sometimes it can be over before we realise what it was. Some people think this is what love is, but if it was, we'd all be in love all the time. So maybe it's more complicated than just biology. In these videos about love, I've always ended up by saying that love isn't this, or love isn't that, or it's all more complicated. That's because love is biopsychosocial. It's partly biology, what happens to our bodies and brains when we love someone, those micro moments. It's partly psychological, how we feel about love, what we want love for, or to do for us. And it's partly sociological, the expectation that we all have to love someone of a different gender to us, the happily ever after, we all need someone, that it's all about romantic love. When we love, all these things fit together, but also overlap and change because of each other. Love can be so complex and confusing, it's really tempting to simplify things by believing in what they tell us in rom-coms or in song lyrics, or to wait for the random bolt of lightning or force field of energy, or to wait for the one who will make all this really easy and simple. But then believing in these things is not helpful and can make love and relationships harder, not easier. We all find this stuff out for ourselves, even sex educators, and it doesn't get any easier. But here's my advice on how to understand love for you. Try not to compare yourself to other people's stories and instead write your own. Be the lead character in your own stories about love and romance and accept there are going to be ups and downs as well as lots of stuff in the middle which might not be that interesting or dramatic. I know I'm such a romantic. Think about what you might need in life. Hugs, support, security, safety, money, comfort, sex. Which of these might a romantic partner provide? Which do you get from friends, family, colleagues? Which do you get for yourself? Think about your qualities, your best bits and the bits you want to work on. Then think about who you might be attracted to. Someone a bit like you or someone a bit more different. Think about how you want to react to those micro moments of connection when they happen and what they might mean for you. Are they love? Is it flirting? If you have a few of those moments in a row, you might end up in a relationship. If you're in a relationship, it can be lovely to hear someone say that they love you. But maybe pay more attention to what you think is important in a healthy relationship. There are some ideas about this here. Remember that love isn't just about what people say, but what people do too. Some people use the word love to make someone do something they don't want to. Like, if you love me, you do this. Or to cover up for the fact that the relationship isn't going very well. Lastly, as you're writing your own script, remember that it's always changing. As you experience fancying, liking, loving more, you'll learn more about yourself and what you want. Try to learn all the time and remember that it's always going to be complicated.